How high will England's flag be flying come full time? Can Rob Shaw's men deliver the bite of the underdog? Or will New Zealand put the full stop on an impressive unbeaten season? All to be revealed for you on Sky Go in 3D with Dowie Morris and Mark Robson talking you through the action. And here on Sky Sports 1 HD with match commentary from Stuart Barnes and Miles Harrison. We constantly hear in the build-up to these games about the importance of the jersey, especially to the world-famous All Blacks and how it's merely on loan. Today, England looking to show what their shirt means to them. The pressure of expectation for victory for England, well, maybe externally at least, that has gone today. But the expectation to perform has not. It is one last shot for glory in this autumn series, looking for a win that would totally change the view of their year. The one change in the team is Farrell for Flood. Alex Corbusiero, who made the big difference last week, Dan Cole and Tom Youngs complete the front row. Joe Launchbury looks to the man of all. Jeff Farling, we did see that snarl that he was asked to give, a real presence in the loose versus South Africa. Tom Wood and Captain Chris Robshaw, the flankers. Ben Morgan, who made a successful return, is at number eight. Ben Youngs is paired with Owen Farrell then, after Toby Flood's foot injury. Farrell holding off the growing challenge of Freddie Burns. Brad Barrett and Manu Tuilagi still under fire from some as a centre combo, looking to fire something back today. Mike Brown and Chris Ashton are the wingers. Alex Good is full back. All three hoping that the ball and the chances come along that line. New Zealand hit by the norovirus this week, but it's the side England expected. Tony Woodcock, Owen Franks and Kevin Mialamo. No Andrew Hoare, of course, suspended after what he did in Cardiff. Brody Retallick comes back into the second row for Luke Romano and partners Sam Whitelock. Liam Messam, Richie McCaw, the captain, and Kieran Reid, the back row. Aaron Smith, Dan Carter. Carter's missed the last two, nursing a calf injury, but he doesn't miss Twickenham. When he last wasn't here, New Zealand lost. Maha Nonu, a man who does know what it's like to lose to England. Wellington 0-3, and Conrad Smith, this a world record centre combination. Julian Sarveya, what a first international year he's had. Corey Jade and Israel Dang, lethal finishes too. Replacements, Freddie Burns waiting for his debut, Courtney Laws back in the squad after injury. For the All Blacks, how about Aaron Cruz's record? 19 caps, he's never tasted international defeat, the best start ever made by an All Black. Lucky charm, well no, this lot do not do luck. Well, it has been bursting with character this autumn, but there's been a shortage of class. In stark contrast, the All Blacks are 24 carat, still shot full of pride. For England to shock New Zealand, they'll need a few moments of magic to mix with their 80 minutes of undoubted endeavour today. 206 caps for England in the starting 15. New Zealand, 788. It's another experience mountain to climb then. And whatever happens here today, any assessment of this autumn has to include that factor. But how England have put themselves today against this team, the best team in the world, is so important to them. Led out by Richie McCaw, arguably the greatest of them all. And about to head off for a six-month rest. And I think it's safe to say he doesn't want to go there on the back of a loss. Alongside him in the back row, Kieran Reid. Here you will be looking at the crowd. A colossal year with yet another one of those towering performances in every aspect of his game. He has imposed his presence game after game. On Thursday, Sean Fitzpatrick said to me he was his pick as the IRB Player of the Year, having been nominated, and I wouldn't disagree. Chris Robshaw and England have got one last 80 minutes to save their autumn. And for Robshaw, regardless of the rights and wrongs of that call last week, and the result of the flag this week, fell on it. He knows that the thing he did appear to be clear. He needs the support of his team today. He's certainly got the support of the crowd. Australia, but couldn't find them. They are going to win today.
today. Player for Ashton, the safe is one of the few players capable of country inspiration. The fact that he's not scoring is more an indictment for those around him because his running lines, as he showed last week against South Africa, remain as sharp as ever. Interesting twist on the anthems today. Laura Wright will lead God Save the Queen. Chris Robshaw's partner, Camilla Kerslake, the New Zealand anthem. Her father is a New Zealander. The national anthem of New Zealand, led by Camilla Kerslake.
recently. Neither was liked. But you've got to like this. North versus South, England versus New Zealand. They first played in Crystal Palace in 1905. New Zealand won then. They've won most since then too. 27 to England's paltry six. But that kind of record makes the wins for England the most valuable prize in rugby outside that modern invention that is the World Cup. An incredible record that the All Blacks have in Europe this century. The England beat them here in 2002, and then they only lost one game since then. That was to France, Cardiff in the World Cup quarter-final in 2007. France had lost to Argentina in the two stages. They were written off, they were not given a chance by anyone. And they beat New Zealand. Played three, lost three to the big three. Let me know where England know that. But they also know that they still have it okay. in their power Time to on. make it all feel a lot better tonight. And just think what a win would do. But can anyone stop the all black machine? Yikes. Farrell. Offload straight away to his captain. Here's good. And then he'll come away with the launch spray. A new one for the All Blacks to have a look at. But he's not alone in this England side. Up from back. That goes Tom Yonks. Tom and Ben Young's father never played in an England side. That beat the All Blacks, 1983. There's Dak, and he calls for the mark, Israel Dak. Five tries at the Rugby World Cup, but he's a fine defender as well as a tackle. England will have to kick better than that. Kicking will be imperative today. And Israel Dak, easy catch, but a loose kick, a chance for Al Alex Good to take a decent kick. And again, no test for New Zealand. Far too close to the opposition, giving them time. Although Parling had done well and nearly got a charge down in. Miss Farrell, covered by Kieran Reid, who came to the side against Italy. He's a very proud man to do so, scored a try in that match. No, it's only early days, but three times England have kicked the ball, and not once has the ball got anywhere near hitting the grass. They have got to start moving New Zealand around the likes of Reed and Dan. Otherwise, New Zealand will control that aspect and they will counter. The kicking wasn't good enough last week. It has to be better. Tom Young's he had a bit of a test last week. He'll get another examination now. Six lineouts lost. First. Turn it off, really really big test with Hudson Bennett getting across that England line last week. That's a good start for the England line. Not back by New Zealand. Richie McCall was there. And we'll say that a few times this afternoon. Really broke the break, break again as Manu tries once and twice. Five and off side. just got through off side. Five off side. But they were putting pressure. Five off side by York now. Well, New Zealand are very good at putting pressure on opposing kickers. Bit of their own medicine there. Good start for young arrows back to the tail of Lawtsbury. He's had a carry, he's had a catch. There's the pressure you see Carter putting on Farrell. But then, when New Zealand are trying to clear their own 22, they're looking to run. If it's not on their kick, not use technique, put under pressure. Good work from England. Little snapshot there, the confidence of Tom Youngs as well. Missed those six lineouts last week. He went to the turn, as you say, arrow light. And that's a better kick. If you're not going to go to the ground, give your chaser a chance to get there. And Ashton, who fancy his chances against the less experienced surveyor. The slam down from Surveyor as well. And not a convincing New Zealand run. In contrast to England's. England delighted with that. They've turned it over. Slap down comes from England, so England have the ball now. Tremendous work at the front there. Day, by the time grabbing the, the arm there, Wood could have been penalised. Reeves may have been a penalty that one, but Wood doing what I was talking about Etzebet was doing to him in England last week. Goes to Jeff Tarling. The core of that one. One of his best games in the race, maybe his best in England colours. Easy to forget, it's only his first international year as well. In his 
12 count today, long sprint. You can see number four on the other lock doing his work. He doesn't have to roll, it was a mind him and he decides that that will be a put in to New Zealand at the scrum. It's so good there, Kevin Mayer Army, ferrets away in those breakdowns, gets his body below it. His lineup though, starting very well. Japan, and he always reminds me of a New Zealand second row. Just think, does he have the girth to be an English lock forward? Then you think of the New Zealand second rows over the years, tall and gangly, but they get around and they make an impact. Oh, look at that, Richard McCall, more caps than all of England. That's how big a test it is. Ian Jones, of course, his physique. Tall and gangly, but one of the world's best. Here's Mark Brown. That's a lot from Corey Chan. That's a very useful thing to do. And Brown doing really well. Remember this nice clear position. Well, that's an excellent effort from the England left winger. And then Farrell puts a lot of feet on that. Really drilled it. New Zealand, if you are going to counter, you have got to make sure you beat the first man who did that really well. Corey Jones will be disappointed. Aaron Smith was beaten as well, but gave a target for his men. Already we've seen a lot of kicking, and we'll do plenty more. New Zealand, they like to kick and they like to work an opening from a counter. Oh, a missed penalty from Farrell there. The young man missing his touch, and England can't afford those errors. They really can't. Saying all week, they've got to play somewhere right. near uh, up to the ground. He's chasing this, he's got Ryan Miller like me, he's always going to do that, but Dag is swiftly across. Three miles! They will do that, put him straight there, through the ball. Chance for England to counter-attack, therefore, comes to Farrell again. Fires that off to Ben Moore. He stands to it, gives it to another Ben Yards. Put down by Alex Gould. Another way to go is Fiji. Seems to have a time to go a dizzy old man this. Farrell kicks again, that was with her once more, and then it's Jane, who's outside his 22 by the They're not good, and he's given the ball away. Tristan, England are not kicking brilliantly, but New Zealand are kicking quite badly at the moment. And in the fall, here's a kick where Matt Brown has 10 metres in space, and Corey Jane beaten there, the New Zealand kick chase game not functioning at the moment. Matt Brown giving some early incentive to the players around him. Now we've seen Tom Young's arrow onto the tail for Lynchbury, who's there again. It's quick off the top. It's Young to turn out Young's as the captain. Skills. The England fullback. But it is an offence at the breakdown coming in at the side. And then Ren Young apologises. England didn't exactly give the ball back quickly to New Zealand, but give me a team in world rugby that does. Well, that started really well. Waterbury at the tail, just piling in the middle, and the key to it is it's not just line out ball, it's really top quality line out ball. Daniel Carter. Bit of a showboat kick with his left foot there, outside of the boot. I think showboat's here about this though. Parlin is really high, lovely soft touch there. And that's the sort of ball that Manu Turani can play off. But no disguise there, it was too easy for me and New Zealand's midfield. It was Messer the line out, and it was Aaron Smith. So quick, everything that he does. Really impressive in New Zealand colours this season. Into the side after the World Cup. There he is again. Dan Cole with a hand on him, but Smith quickly away. And there's Woodcock, the one who scored the try in the World Cup final. Smith to another Smith. There are three in the 23. As Conrad Ben's on the bench. A short ball from Rotary, getting a tackle well. 
forward to. They are kings of patience, New Zealand, and Carver goes crossfield, looks for Jane. Jane rises, but again, George Clancy gives the penalty. He's very, very quick. Not anyone straying in front today. Captain. Captain. You guys have a scrum. You guys have a scrum for the ball kick there. No rush here from England. We need to show composure in all facets of their game. And playing it at their pace is just one of those. So where is Corey Jane? Is he in front? Right at the bottom of your screen, you will see Corey Jane's head. It is a desperately tight call. Here he is, and it's close. It's very close. Brown chased it down well anyway. That's a good take from Longspring, the Wasp, who's brought his club form onto the international stage. Yeah, as you can see, again, the pressure was under to get that box in here. Well, he played Colin Jane, Mike Brown, using the full-back position as well, and it showed there. Put into New Zealand, but the whole front row right there at their caps were caught. We are long in France, that's more than the England team put together. Corey Jane is a master aerial rugby. Started as a full back, sevens expert, but a brilliant footballer, and he is so committed. This guy has everything it takes to be a top level international full back. It's probably in New Zealand as a bloke called Dak, but he's made himself into an outstanding win. Carter's kicking game and Jane's ability to win those crossfield kicks makes him such a threat. He scored those tries against Scotland and Italy. It was yellow card for him on the score sheet last week. The report of the game in the match against Wales. Well. Steve Hansen, a former Wales coach, of course, and what a start he's made as the overall boss, having been assistant to Graham Henry. His record was pretty good as well, just about as good as it gets when you play in the World Cup team, and that was in Stoke in January. Drew the best driver. Touch! Set! What is it, 20 on the beach in there? It's astonishing. We need a 21, but that was a good scrum from England. Crossfield again from Carter goes the other way this time. Good was trying to get his kick up again. So there was there in attendance and he scored 10 tries in his first international year leading try score in international rugby this season the New Zealand winger this is the scrum in England's effort well, England will be looking for penalties from the scrum and they'll be looking for an edge New Zealand the way they play they'll be looking for top quality ball just to release their backs it's a nice cross field kick by Carter good Took it really well, but Surveyor, his chase was excellent there. Just starting to pick up their kick, kick and catch game, New Zealand. After a, a slow start, England was slightly concerned Touch. because New Zealand aren't out of the block yet. And against the All Blacks, you want Touch. to build points. Set. <laughs> Saw the space. Right block, that's gone behind McCormick in retreat. Oh, no, the there. Throws his head back. Of course, not going to play wide. But he will take it, so catch him. The interceptor. McCormick will not appreciate the ball that went to him. He put him in trouble. Or caught him in trouble. You better have to have a good He's a powerful play initially from Mark Nodley, but that's poor boy. New Zealand pride themselves on the quality of their front five with Mike Brown's left hand. Just knocks that one up. It may not be Usain Bolt, but he's under the post there. A little bit loose from the court. Big attack position here for New Zealand. One of the reasons Brown Ten. has brought into the side Ten. his big left boot. We've hardly seen it thus far. Stand on, we have it again. Instinct two to to immediately and engage to get it long. Interception situations. Get out of here. 
He must have just kicked for the sake of it against New Zealand. They kick to force the loose kick, and then they counter. That is one of the prime attack interruptions. So, if the New Zealand kick isn't good enough, Mike Brown bringing the ball back, beating the couple, is really good play. It's the ideal way Hurt. to take on New Zealand. Set. Carter's so flat. Much better New Zealand scoring there. It's Carter flat. And now, two and he holds on to his ankle. And it's such a great battle between those two today. Carter again to White Lock and then Neil Arnold. That's somewhere on the borderline between cynical and silly because that should be three points for Daniel Carter. There's no way George Clancy is going to miss that. He knows what he's doing there. Then he puts his hand up and says, George, if you didn't know it was me, here I am. Carter should kick this for Daniel Carter, imperious a player as he is, every now and again. Has had an early misfire. The problem is, after the misfire, he tends to get everything. We've seen it here at Twickenham, haven't we? This game, a couple of loose kicks, and you're thinking, great, Dan Carter's having a bad day. And then suddenly, everything goes. Yeah, only in 67 points later against England. Zealand at 26, 2006. This for the first three in 2012. Well, he has missed, and if you were going to order a kick for your first one, then that would be pretty close to that order. Virtually in front, I can't say like the booing too much, but the England supporters will like the fact that Carter has missed six days knowing that. Tremendous restart and excellent point from White Lock there. Take from White Lock. He's not out. to retire. Six foot eight, over 19 stone. But he held on the feet, despite all of that weight and presence. What he wants to do is put on the floor again. Effective tackle in England. Uh, the watching Kieran Reid keep delivering these one-out passes to the likes of Ritalik, but England are ready for them, and they're not just making tackles, they're making very effective tackles. Kickoff much better than a lot we saw against South Africa, competitive, but that's high class stuff there from Whitelock. And then defensively, the threat of the unspoken Conrad Smith. Evan Farrell just goes a little bit high and he just shrugs his way through there. England have to make sure their tackles stop New Zealand on the game line and drive them backwards. They mustn't let them go forward. That's the sort of tackle they need. Stuart speaking there, Joe Launchbury receiving some treatment, but he stays out there, he's OK. He made his premiership starting debut February 2011. And his international debut, as you can see, early in November. Chris Robshaw now, we go up, he's at the 14 players, and tell you, well, the world's not the one team, they're the world champions, but they are not from a different planet. We're in this game, they're making errors, we can do this. Carter again. And good with time. Until Mama arrives. Barrett with Ashton almost in the way there. There's Barrett in the way. That should have gone to Ashton. There's two of them. And there goes Morgan. between the two, we're going to need to sort that out, so can't really afford to 
seed it and out possession. And they get back to that 100 percent Somewhere near it. We saw in the first two weeks. Not low. And he just gets the ball away. And the advancing foul is good. And he strikes that pretty well. He passes this ball to Jeff Tarling, and Tarling, when he takes it on, hardly makes any move towards the game line. England have to have their carriers playing flatter and coming harder. That's just England going backwards. Carter, up there. Tarling, oh, lovely ball to Jane. Jane tries to go on the outside this time, and he beats good to it, and he gets across. The left, England, huh? a bit of a desperate scramble there. They were being stretched. Aaron Smith, though, that is not the right call. There. Hear the groans from the New Zealand players on the referee's microphone. Hands of Dan, superb there. But well, that was a real gimme to Alex Good. Good to touch. Front line we go. Dean Ryan. No concerns around lineup, but it's a good read from New Zealand. Tom Wood dummies forward with launch bring Corbusiera coming back. We keep an eye on Reed. He's the man who reads it with White Lock straight back, and it's a great steal. England reacted last week, didn't they, against South Africa when one of their players was being kicked on. But quite clearly, that is the England weights. Not straight there. Ben Young just gives Aaron Smith a little bit. I don't think that's a bad idea. Smith has been so dangerous with the ball in hand going forward but once or twice teams have got to him and if you can get New Zealand going back because you can run the scrum half you really can do that so good play there from Ben Young put his way back and the first match in 2010 he was a New Zealand man looks at the turn off the run penalty the scrum for England Just shading that battle on there. I think that penalty proves the point. Much better kick for me. Much better kick. And that was better. And considering he missed earlier, he's got character, is not he? Oh, yeah. Real pressure coming on Owen Farrell. Owen Franks there. Good to see you. Big debate after the South Africa game. Was he legal? The key point was, though. In the eyes of the referee, he was spot on and he won that battle. Now, in the danger zone. Not to see That's the end of it. Have some form of strike with them, not just the drive. And the answer is not dangerous here. Two the same ball. They're leaving up there, they're leaving. Use it the now. The form was a good one. Use it. They did stop, so he's going to use it now. Referee George Prince is calling it.
But he's yet more in the score, but that's what England have got to do now. They've got to make it count where it matters most. There's Woods charged it. Great work from Tom Wood there. It was premeditated, it was easy for England to pick up on the All Blacks. Sure the the would have been one of the greatest teams ever. Far from perfection at the moment, there's a little bit of panic in the air. England trying to join the dance. That's one! Darling wins again. Six Nations. He was the next cab on the rank after Toby Flood. He's got the start. He's got the points. And you really have to leave with something. And they do. Dean. Oh, this was a significant improvement. You can come in round the corner but getting straight. And when you're straight, he gives you the chance of simple hands. And that was a big chance for Afton. Butchers from Reed and then down to Franks, Smith. And has that woken up your box? All is the danger. Great kick from Carter as well, wasn't it? Here he is. Release him! Well, to be fair to England, I don't think the all got to be asleep. It's just that England has started pretty well. Advantage. But there's a chance. Just came in the side, you'd attack and give him in the side. Well, it's not as if New Zealand had put an 80 minute performance together on this tour. They've sort of burst into gear for 20, 25 minutes and scored a lot of points and then gone into uh, Dortmund mode again. England, I think they're on the edge of this one. Oh, ben Morgan there. Uh, frustration for Stuart Lancaster. New Zealand weren't really going anywhere there. But what a restart. Mark of a really good team. New Zealand go 3 0 down. They've had five minutes, probably some of the poorest rugby in the autumn, and then Dan Carter hits that flat kick that he's special on, that he's made his own. And Kieran Reid just hunts it down, beats Dorchby to it, and New Zealand immediately go on the attack. Yes, if it wasn't waking up, it was concentrating the mind, and we saw it all in that restart. But we also saw Stuart Lancaster's total frustration, and he just got the lead, grabbing the momentum, the crowd was going. And Morgan, that wasn't a silly category. Here's Carter, but he missed his first. It's like a better angle. Well, this is not too testing for a man of his caliber, but my goodness me. But that last rock there, you came along the side of it, and I don't want to interfere with this one half. You know shoulder I mean? open, Mark. Shoulder open, and that was all. It was just fading away from the moment he struck that one. And what will worry Carter a little bit, he's hooked one and he's faded another. It'll give England great encouragement. Really does. Dax up and under. 
good stretch. This Mark Brown, he loves that. Just a kick and run through or over the bodies. He's a spiky customer. That kind of competitive edge. England really need today. And they're showing it across the board. Youngs. Dang again. Holding back a bit to try and deal with Sardar. But he deals with England by going out wide and finding Nono. Nono after his own kick. If he gets something on this, it's real danger. And that cross comes out, it's good. And Nono appreciates that. Tall kick, and New Zealand will always look to hunt, cause problem from it. And in the end, good, happy to see that ball go in. Good counter. Retallick wins that line out. Loose into the middle, it's eventually picked up by Conrad Smith. It might still work, sometimes they do, but it's very unlike New Zealand. Dag again, Carter, White, Reed, Dan Cole is on his feet now. Dribble off, Nono to Mirlamu, out of the tackle well to Smith, but England tackling well. Through goes Rawlsbury, making himself a nuisance again. Carter, he shot him back. That was Tom Youngs. England new boys making the hits. That's Nessum to Smith, and he's got no one there because Farrell is there. And Cole's working again, and Cole's got it. Well played. Dunker, Robshaw. Good, England are looking to go. Barrett thought better of it. He only had a pop out. Sorry. Here, but this might be something New Zealand could feed off as it breaks up a bit. But the England line is good, led by Rob Shaw. Back, by the side. Stay All here. That criticism last week. People forgot just how well he played in the game. Rob Spree again. Smith to Carter. There goes White galloping a bit. Tackle from Corbusiero. Conrad Smith, this will be a real test of the England defence, the length of this attack, as it came straight back at them. Rock! Yep, our result. Continues to be a terrific effort from England. And there in goes Wood. All Blacks know they're in a game, all right. Another loose ball, and this time it does lead to the knock on. England just get the strong oh, no. feet. They can press pause and reflect on some excellent, truly yeah. excellent defence. Yeah, Aaron Smith struggling at the moment. Now we always talked about New Zealand and their attacking game is not functioning yet. But what does function is their game awareness. Arrow is Morgan. He's trying to get the Julian Surveyor. Just watch this now. When we clear this, just watch exactly what happens when we run this one on. Mayalamu just eases into his path, and Surveyor has a metre and a half, and suddenly Mahanonu is in space. Clever work from the All Black hooker. Work from Dan Cole was exceptional, and he got his reward, didn't he? Second man in, see Launchbury very quickly involved as well. Cole's not that aggressive at the breakdown, Farrell with the tackle, but what he does do, if, if he gets there before you, you do not budge him. A very English-style turnover and really well done there. But Aaron Smith must be up. <laughs> Two big concerns for New Zealand at the moment. Smith is really wobbling at the moment, and Dan Carter's got Chris! kicking. Two very kickable ones missed. show for England. It's the one miss so far. Keep it like that, and they've got a snip. Ben Youngs to Barrett and Tuilani. That was a little bit laboured, but Tuilani gets it going. Uh -huh. Rob Shaw and Youngs again. Chip is meant for Aston to chase. As Longstreet well gets there first, as Aston just checked. That's a penalty, though. And again, it's because England are committing to the breakdown. And Launchbury is a major part of this. I mean, what is it? Set the road back for everyone. It's, it's a bad bad thing. Thing. Yeah. I think Tom Wood is also having an influential game very close there. 
Post the greatest chase from England, but Benyam's got that ball onto the ground. Just cut split second off Padag. He didn't have a soft option. He had to think, what do I do? And there's Launchbury and there's Tom Wood. Second man in's doing a really good job. We saw it with that down curl turnover. Farrell with a tackle, second man in Wood. This time it's Launchbury with a tackle. And then Tom Wood is making a real nuisance of himself, having a cracking game on the blind side. Working beautifully together, and the captain acknowledges that. He's getting some assistance there at the breakdown. <laughs> do you, do you, I, I was certain in Chris Robshaw was just going to go and pat Richie McCall on the head. Maybe he thought better of it. Let, let the Giants keep slumbering. I was even more certain he wasn't going to kick for the corner. <laughs> well, let's just leave that, shall we? That's his learned, moved on. They say... Concentrate on the positives. Here's Farrell. Himself, doesn't he? Right. Uh, that is a ridiculous decision from George Clancy. Does he know that a number eight is allowed to compete for a ball at a kickoff? And maybe because he pinned England pretty cruelly. Captain, I give you guys the same protection and kick off. Going for, uh, the other way. Still chuntering about it, he's all not happy with that. Every right. Opinion and viewing of the replay. You can see that way live too. You don't mind electrical from a referee, but when it's wrong, he's really telling you what's wrong. That does burn a bit. Yes, to a Tomorrow! Carter, and he's still got going to the well, good support as well. To keep the he doesn't going. have to release it, that's fine. And you don't have a left winger at the moment, they cannot be turned over. No intention of being up there. Tom Young's in the driving seat there. And the handbrake was off, wasn't it? Launch three again. Partly. Coming up to five minutes before half time. Absolutely flying back. In the front of our carry so well. Young's is flying, his red shot to Farrell and Tyler in there! Tackled by Carter. What was that? Fine tackle as well. Come off his leg! His eyes must have been lighting up. Well, hands there from Robshaw to keep it going. Well, come on, bro. Come on, come on. It's not in there. Oh, it's left down here, scrum. Back on. It's a game of few chances, but England. Getting closest so far. Right. Now Young's, he's got great acceleration and it enables him to just get off his feet and just keep going. Real target for the forwards. And then this is a nice delayed pass from Farrell. Carter makes a great tackle. And Aaron Smith, if we stay with it, again, the scrum half just loses control. That's an accidental offside. And England unlucky not to have the pudding. Okay. Can't stop just thought there was a, a hint of a check no, on the Owen Farrell pass, which is what we've been wanting. And so much since he's come on, he's, he's been lateral and going across. That pass there, to Martin Luther to to really just checked New Zealand. Yeah, we need to stay. Keep an eye here, please, Lord. You're outside. Today, when it's England. Touch! Going to those places at the moment. <laughs> the 
Drop the bind here. Scrum. Three. Drop the bind. He's going against Dan Cole. Three. Drop the bind. Here's Carter. Good kick from Dan Carter. See that time goes the way of New Zealand. It's a long time since New Zealand have got to half time without a point. 1998 by any chance. That produces on the ball. And the 15 over. Here's Youngs. There's a lot of space there. And Jane goes back. And here's Dan. from Ben Youngs. That producer might be on the board, but New Zealand are not at the moment. Get my line. Horrible line out. That's why, for all his natural skill, every now and again, Andrew Hall just shades the battle hall, of course. Bound at the moment, but New Zealand hand in possession to England. And Tony Young's doing a good job. Tony Young's couldn't work together his forwards, that's five takes now, but Jeff can't okay. the line out. And Lawrence takes the ball. All the back there is illegal. Now England will buy this card, come to a height, and then start again with that and get away the ball. And Jones is not going to take that risk. Now it goes to foul. Good pass onto two and one. Takes him on the outside shoulder. Will go to score that angle. Then it's Alex Good. Presents it back to Ben Young, so what time to score this would be. Two and a half minutes. Advantage. Under now until the interval. Well, there's the chance to score a penalty. England go for the drop goal and foul. Oh, that's what Mr. Wilkinson used to do. Three shot. I'll take it. I'll show my confidence as I went foul. This season, but he stepped into the top shirt today. And his goal kicking, top kicking has been full of authority. He's just not making errors at the moment, and the England pack have been superb. New Zealand, they do need to wake up very quickly. England have a handy lead. Such an important spell now. This little tiny spell before half time. And England keep coming. George Tansy has another look, but it is coming back. The bonus penalty here, and England know it. It's fine, he's on his feet. He's on his feet, no problem. Cole again. Sorry, it's uh, Brown. Brown. He's straight from his left wing. He said he'd love to join the forwards in those situations. We'll have a classic example of it. And what he's done for his team, another. Have to go narrow here because Ben Morgan is the temporary left wing. Yeah. Foul. And he's starting to move it into good. Decides to stay in fifth. England protect possession. They've been good at that in this first half. They've been good at an awful lot of things in this first half. Rob Shaw. I don't want to stop playing. There's Barrett. There's a plenty of ball and points to show for him. Corbusier. Tom Ward. That's strong first half. He's had to go And there it is the penalty. Ben Youngs. Austin, but Farrell's going to get another shot and for 12 now. Now that's where you can turn one down from round number yeah. halfway. But the conditions played their part. Now is he pointing to the corner here? He has to go for goal here. He has to go for goal. to say. Farrell could get it from here on a clear day. But as we go to half time, what well, England will be delighted with is the fact when they've kept it tight, they've stopped New Zealand exercising their superiority in one-on-one -on -one skills, and they've made it a collective battle. And 
the collective battle up front is being won by England. The crowd are right behind him, I mean, Farrell is behind him, and when England have got territory and they've kept possession, they're coming away with points. That was a work into last moment, that drop goal. When you've got your opponents in a spot of bother, turn a bit of pain into agony, and that's what Farrell did there. This will be real agony. If England kick this, they go in 12-0, they have a massive chance of producing a shock against the 12-1 on favourites. New Zealand in trouble, England flying high. Let's just listen to this roar if it goes over. It's still an if. Farrell. He's got it. Oh, yeah. He's got it. of the game that are so important. England against South Africa just drilled it down Dwayne Vermeulen's channel and he carried it away. These kicks are good. Farrell's technique excellent and Jeff Parling catches a left elbow from Brody Ratalak for his pains but England got the ball initially. They're winning the 50-50 breakdown ball, the 50-50 uh, restarts. Even the best face challenges and New Zealand have one here. But England have a penalty here. To best to say, obviously in the New Zealand dressing room, it would have been tense trying to find the right words, the way out of this. England dressing room, well, they would have had time to think about being 12 0 up. But maybe the inexperience is coming in here. They have no fear. And they've gone at New Zealand again in the scrum. Won the penalty, and Farrell will have another shot. Well, we know the All Blacks have shown this amazing capacity to score very quickly, but this kick goes over from Owen Farrell. It takes England out, the range, out of range of two converted tries. We are in the realm now, if this goes, of very, being a very big lead. And frankly, Farrell has nailed his three penalties and his drop goal so well that though it's only five metres from touch, I fully envisage this flying straight through the post. And 80,000 plus Englishmen getting off their seat and going potty. And Farrell will know all of that. And this is his challenge here, his personal challenge for the team, for the crowd. Everybody watching, three points here could make such a big difference. Keep the technique. See whether the world champions, the world best, are a world great team. The challenge is laid down 15 0. Yeah, that's about the restart. It will be typical of New Zealand. Maybe not today on the evidence so far, but over the last 20 odd games to come straight back with a score, but it's England who win it. That ball. And they're in a great position to win the match as Ben Young's almost got away there. Advantage still being played. I'm sure England wants it. Oh, does. Now it's over. But England are almost over halfway. With Ben Young's and Rob Shaw, who tried to go there to get in touch. 
Well, just sums up the chapter two of the nature of this test match today. Alex Good eases past who else? Dan Carter misses the tackle, and he's away and he's disappointed yeah, there that he just couldn't quite link. Going backwards, Carter comes up, step, lovely play there. Pulls him in, goes on the outside. Ben Young's in support, nothing on the left hand side. But again, confidence from the Saracens fullback to go. Touch! Set! Break it up, break it up. Strong was on the move. And as ever, the ball went to the second row, not the front. Over here, over here. And I need to move, he's going to go straight, okay? Get the shoulder up, both of you. Six wins for a new day's New Zealand in the history of the game. Only three years if you want. Wouldn't take long. But 1936, the first win. 13 0 it was that day. Prince Obolensky for the historians, England. And in front of that move at the moment. But plenty of time for New Zealand to come back and come back hard. Milan. Side entry ish there from McCall. Oh, England winning the collision again, driving New Zealand back. Retellet. Reid. Rob Shaw, another tackle. Top tackle, top carrier. That's what. And all that flat to cope with, it was very flat, he said, when he returned to camp, but the players and messages from outside the camp lifted him. Here's the New Zealand captain, trying to lift his team here. Carter, nothing. Dang, Brown's got a lot to look at here, over the shoulder and round the back, and it's Jane, Jane carrying well. Not hurt. Tooling and getting back, but Jane wasn't held, held there, in goes Smith. England spoiled. Believe it, Owen Farrell was in there. Who plays the ball? Is off it? your feet. Come on, off your feet. Mike Bryant. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, Somebody hey, was hey, spiking hey. and England again. The call has come. Oh, oh, oh. As they fly into help their man. Coming off the feet at the tackle area. That's what I saw. That's what I did. Back is back here. Back here. Off the feet. Well, I have to say, it's a great break from Corey Jane. But if the tackle there is for an Englishman going off his feet, the tackle area, five metres out, that's a yellow card. In that situation, that's a yellow card. Now, Carter is not going to go for three points. Does he know that's Rob Shaw's corner? He's in with Mr. Farmer, Ryan's not going for points early on. Mark! Then, of course, it was Wales playing catch-up, and not catch-up they had to play. Yeah. New Zealand playing so it here. Not such a good And Aaron Smith and Mill are moaning and pouring through again. Now on the wrong side, mustn't interfere, does it? Morgan gets out of there. Smith again to Reid. That's a really strong carry from Reid. And suddenly England going backwards at the tackle. That's the England line, it's Smith. So back, it can't stop scoring. He wants to watch the run in this year. Oh, he thinks he's got another. Okay. Time off. He's only two metres up. Julia, can you hear me? That down, that's a brilliant Is there any reason not to award a try? But the footwork of Surveyor and then the upper body strength. And New Zealand, it's almost like they just went from automatic into manual and straight through the gears. Surveyor steps inside two, Ben Young's misses in first two, Alangi's there, he's just carrying everyone with him, and that is down. That's a try, no doubt whatsoever. Tom Wood, the last man to try and stop him, but Surveyor... That's a try. And a, a magnificent finish. Yeah.
No reason there. Thank you. Number 11 for Julian Sauvet. Just his ninth cap. New Zealand, as England had feared, as many would have expected. Maybe England did too. Get that. My first try of the game. This is far more dynamic. For the first time, McCaw carries, and England this time they can't get to Aaron Smith. It's a quick ball. Dag's hands are good. And look at that. It's a four man bust there. 11 tries in nine games, and I would hazard that, that is probably the most important Julian Surveyor has scored to date. And that tells you what a contest England are making of this. They're still in control. Carter gets his kick now, but it's a conversion. So they made the right call. As Mr. Hindsight joins us again, but it was the call they had to make. And given the scoreline at 15 0, it's not 15 0 now. Carter's found his kicking boots. Front line. This is a really poor decision against Owen Farrell. He works his way back. You talk about going through the gate. He does everything right. Aaron Smith has that ball in his hands when Farrell gets him. That's why England protested. The ball well calls. People are going to look back afterwards, but England have got to write that out now. There's still eight points clear. They need the territory and they need to stop New Zealand playing a pace and getting into the danger zones. And these are the calls that referees have to make in the heat of the battle. Watch out. And there's Jane. Oh, he's so strong, he got through his man there. Farrell gets back. Different New Zealand here. But that is not the best service. Oh, I saw back. a few of those in the first half. England needed one there because there were plenty of black shirts lining up to launch another attack. Okay, but you get the feeling New Zealand have had a big telling off at half time and probably told themselves off a chance to take stock. Good, trying to make that into a good kick. With a space here for Dad and company. It's going to sit up for Nonu. It does. Over the top with a chip. Good as Carl. Trying to get back there now. His hands excellent under pressure. Farrell bring him on, bring him on. Boots it away. Is he going to stay in? It does. With Israel down. Now suddenly it's coming at England from all angles. Carter, Milano. Smith again to Carter. Here goes Jane. He's heavily involved at the start of the second half. And he's creating something more lovely from Conrad Smith. To Kieran Reid, back in the corner. <laughs> Such menace. As I say, from all different angles, England not knowing where to look. Well, Dag and Jane are just carving England up at the moment. This is a magnificent response from a team so flat for 40 minutes. 15 0 down after 41. They have clawed their way back into this game. They have savaged England in five minutes. We talked about their capacity to score. Owen Farrell has to find touch. Dag dances down the touchline. But when Farrell misses touch, New Zealand mean no England are not reorganised. This time the pass is good. Morgan misses Jane. Jane, a superb offload. Conrad Smith and Kieran Reid in the right place, as he so often is. Now, Carter missed two sitters in the first half. Now to Butte at the start of this half. Look at this. Gorgeous play from Dag. But England, only one tackle missed, I think, in the first half. Six in about two minutes. And the scoreboard looks very different. New Zealand have made two changes. Romano was involved in that last attack and come on for Itali. And now also Faumoina has come on for Owen Franks in the front row. And New Zealand have changed. Regardless of the personnel switches, here's Carter. And now it is one point between the two teams. Questionable penalty, missed touch fine. And suddenly, 
It's totally different. There are the England bench options. Well, right now, right now, I don't think they make any call. Because England, I don't think, are going to win by fighting fire with fire. They've got to quell them. Farrell is kicking so well, so it's not time for Burton. Maybe Haskell to add firepower at the breakdown. Maybe Courtney Laws to make some big hits, because England's tackling game is just Stop, going six, backwards. Six. They're making the tackles, but they're not driving New Zealand back. Would be easy to forget that England is still in the lead here. Brown. They wanted to be in touch on the hour mark. And then they would have been getting Broody at 15 mil up. But they're still definitely in touch. More than that. Here's no five. Here's Farrell. Suddenly, England have changed the tone. You saw New Zealand don't have all the bench, but they have a very good one. They're coming back here, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Player joined the lineup before the ball was thrown in. Player joined the lineup before the ball was thrown. So it's a free kick. So if New Zealand go for touch here, which they won't, they'll lose possession. Will be England's lineup. And England look for it. A cover kind of tackle on the short side, and they find it. Try scorer Julian Salvaire. Bad decision. Very good defence. Lawnsbury again growing reputation and Ben Morgan and everywhere there. England. No way New Zealand have space to work that. And strong the surveyor is too big back too big sec uh, second row back row smash him out. First change from England. Morgan goes Who's your half back? On James Haskell. Former Highlander. In New Zealand, of course, when he'd been on his travels. Parling again is the call. I'm sure, Captain. He's called. Two a lane. Through the first two. Through three. And they're going to get a score again. They're going to get a congestion. It's magnificent. There's no other word. He's going to the right mid level to a lane. Straight through Daniel Carter. Weak defence from the All Blacks, and the Leicester man straightened. Nothing 
selfish, nothing wrong with him at that time. But he has put it to Ashton. He's waited a long time for an international try, but he was there at the right moment, straight under the post. And New Zealand, they must be rocking more than ever. They must have thought 15 14, we're in control. They're way out of control. Flat ball, watch Carter here. Doesn't get near to Alani. Shrugs off McCaw, and the time of the pass, superb for Ashton. But did you see Kieran Ree there? Behind the post. He did not look like he was on the losing side. He was nodding away as if to say, we'll come back here. They can jump and they can shout. <laughs> what a finish we're going to have. You are never out of sight against the All Blacks. We saw that in 97, the famous 26 all draw. And Farrell is wide with that one. But England had the bonuses of the Carter misses, remember, in the first half. Looked like a free six points for Carter there. What a strong run from Tuilagi. And Chris Ashton, 11 games without a try. The splash returns. Parling claims. Stay seven back to go. Youngs to Farrell. Checks. Got a jink in there from Farrell. And another good pass to Brown. England have got the bit between their team here. They really fancy it. As those scores for Barrett and Ashton prove. Who's going to be first here? Ashton is trying to get there. The left hand drop, but Barrett and Ashton and Tuilani just pile in. Say the thief. Smith, think about the quick one. That's what they're not doing. Give you the benefit of the doubt there. Dan Carter never lost against England when he's been on the field. He's on the bench in Wellington in 03. So he went straight. Carter gets fixed in there. We talked about Ashton's ability to pick the line. He knows what's happening here. Just watch this. Daniel Carter doesn't make the tackle. Ashton fades outside Nunu. Nunu doesn't obstruct him. And Chris Ashton is in at the corner. The right wing in at the left side. That's what he does so well. Smith. Carter. Savea. Haskell comes up. Reed. Jane Thornton held there, nearly turned. The 
New Zealand leave it right back over. And the call is for England to leave it. See me alarm moves off. Dane Coles, the youngster, is on. There is number 16. Socks round his ankles. So there. To the lane. And Barrett. Maybe they've come of age today. And they've taken so much flack as well. And Rob Shaw last week. Rob Shaw tackles again. He's into double figures now for his personal tackle count. The England captain dropped back on Red Smith. And when that starts to happen, well, Marsh, Colin Red Smith, Sorry? guilty for one try, knock on there. Dan Carter getting smashed defensively. The big players are just crumbling. It's been a long season for New Zealand. Ten. But England <laughs> seems to have them now on the back foot. Having said that, we've had five tries in 23 minutes. Who knows what else could happen? An amazing 25. Oh, this is fascinating here. We've got Weeper and Cruden coming on. As Carter goes, along with Smith. But England have brought on Freddie Burns for his first cap. Oh, and Farrell goes. He has certainly played his part. 22 year old Freddie Burns from Gloucester Ten. wins his Set. first cap. Uh, and what a time to come on. An amazing show of faith from Stuart Lancaster because Farrell has played the game England wanted. That's an amazing show of faith. Ben Young through the gap again. Goes the English scrum half to Weston. Against the All Blacks when you come on. I have to go back. 
Yep, yep, yep. Reset scrum will suit England. Yeah, half the time we have the debate, we're not in the business of making excuses here, but we did don't talk about the fact that maybe England, just maybe, might be benefiting from a 16th and 17th man, Mr. Nora and Mr. Virus. You know, New Zealand were that lackluster, but the way they came out the start of the second half just throws that argument out the window. Yeah, sure. Heading back now. Correct! You wonder if they just let it go. But New Zealand was so ten. sharp for 10 minutes. Ten. Then they made one or two errors. And England, Sorry? this time, they exploited the defensive lapses, which they haven't done in the past. Matt Cat said, when we have chances, we have to take them. England, this autumn, like so many autumns before, have not been doing that. Today, they have, and that's the difference. He must find Phil like he's in rugby head with Freddie Burns. But there is a 16th man today, and it's this Twickenham crowd. They've certainly played their part. It's as if all their frustrations have been so coming out today as well. well. Not just the players. Ben Young is coming off yes. now. It's for the Nick, one against New Zealand in 1983. Ben and Tom, Nick Sons, are all set to be victors. This year, as Tom Young stays on and throws in, Wood with the catch. England almost with the game here. Advantage. I know you would delete the almost. Another penalty. England pack steamroll on the black. Burns, he knows it's advantage. advantage. It's called over, but Burns has just yeah, we'll have a line on. the New Zealand five metres from their own line, exactly where they wouldn't want to be. Hold on, boy, after man. Incredible. Well, this is a hammering. I've had this lock on. It was knocked on, but again, Ward and England in there. Over. Talked about the New Zealand menace when they scored one of their tries. Hey. You look at Courtney Laws, who they England have got menace of their own Vernapola too. And Jonathan Joseph, he's had to be patient this autumn, didn't get off the bench last week. Initially out of the team with an ankle injury. Care to Burns, that's a lovely delivery to Tom Wood. Now he's stormy on. Mike Brown's got it. Care is Harlequin's teammate. Now Smith, Conrad Smith. Haskell sets it back. Burns again to good. England are going to have to be good here against the All Black defence. Wide. And Ashton can't quite. Have a line on Burns. Have a line on Burns. Owen very well, extremely solid today. But Burns has come on a little chip. Look at this. Pass. 15. So flat, so fast. That's high quality. Oh, yeah, Tom Wood then has a chance. Time off. Really good stuff from the Gloucester man. He's come on and he's added something different to Farrell. The balance has been very good at time. The execution, yeah. the skills, the precision that, that England have been looking for and the clear thinking too. Look at this. That is a gorgeous yeah. pass. If you float that ball, it gets picked off. The, the objective when you're really attacking is almost at zero degrees. You don't throw it backwards, you hit that game line and you come on to it. And England did it there. This feels so much like that day in 1997. When England raced into a lead then and ended up with a draw. But it was treated like a win. Just because of what had happened before. I suppose... Now this, how far away supersedes it there for 35 14. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Vunapon. Care, Burns looking confident on his toes and waiting. And Barrett now starting to show confidence. And so he should. After what he's done, especially in this second half. there. For the attacking sense in England. Advantage. Well, they are giving great balls. Another advantage, Rob Shaw. Penalty. Retrieving player. Everybody now. Interfering with the scrum half. 
Or on the tackle area. Uh, tackle goal, New Zealand are on the line. Tackle goal. It's running. <laughs> so he had one at three. It has been. Uh, you can. Barry took us on to make sure to both are not seeing off the ball and we've got the ball again. They got it a bit in New Zealand, but when they beat them here, it was never a full strength New Zealand team. Sure, they did it in Wellington. But this is England's finest win I can ever remember here against New Zealand. Brad Barrett with the break. A little bit of luck now. Dad just hits him, but great support from Barrett. You earned your luck. They were so unlucky against South Africa last week with a try. That's a beauty. Astrid support line. Can Burns finish it? Oh, yes, he can. Freddie Burns. That confidence is there for all to see. Barrett cheers him on. effort from the England pack. There is a little subplot here. The New Zealand teams, we talk to players, have been involved in losing sides against England. It's something that never leaves them. Nobody wants to be on the end of the record margin of defeat to England. And that is what New Zealand are still facing here. 
currently stands at 13. That game back in 1936. But the way they're playing, they're still chasing the game. England have had another break there. Not fun. Got another advantage that time for the knock on. Advantage over. Remember a man down here with Von Apollo in the semi. They've sprinted New Zealand up front in the second, this last 20 minutes, smashed them. Hammer chiseled the lot. Here's Brown with a drop goal attempt. <laughs> but now we're down to three minutes. There's no decision New Zealand are going to make that's going to alter this result. One job, uh, an astonishing score, 12 to one on with the bookmakers to win, and England have put them away in style. Astonishing. And England are eyeing up the forties, and that's Lumo, Cape Town territory. That's pace. Off your feet. Sealing off. Ball lost. Here we go. And away, Captain! Recall, not the way he wanted to go into his sabbatical at all. It's ruined his six-month break, Miles. It's ruined it. There'll be one minute of Betty Day. He won't think about it. You just know that with McCall. There goes Vito. Vito looking fresh. Oh, what a ball inside that is. Terrain. That was breathtaking. He goes. Here goes Nonu. New Zealand showing exactly what they can do. But in doing so, they're showing how well they're going to play today. I was just thinking that Freddie Burke's penalty and the kick for the 21 could be significant. And the pass goes astray and England can blow their cheeks. New Zealand have made more handling errors than England. They're so ambitious normally, they have to stick today. They have. Say again, please? But you would do against that defence, okay. wouldn't you? Six for a team. Six wide. Six wide to come on up. Six points. You can see why they are the best team in the world. They've lost this game today, but England will have to show it to win. And it's the next back to something bigger Let's go. and better for New Zealand. They've got to say, hey, it's our only one in 21. Absolutely. England can't kid themselves. They're in the middle of a run. Right, New Zealand, are, which is coming to an end. With one win in their next six. And win against Fiji, of course, is top one. The majestic tournament today, what a return to international rugby. What, what's pleased me about this performance, we've seen the character always Cut. expect from England, you've seen a fabulous forward effort, but they have created space, they have made the breaks, the ball, and they the have ball, taken their tries. Three scores, three tries against the All Blacks, incredible. Here is Reid. OK, OK, advantage Good. No advantage, not 10, not 10. On the line now. now chasing, okay. whether they know it or not. Trying to avoid the biggest ever defeat against England. This is what it's all about now. Or at least finish their year on the high. They've been on a high for so long since the World Cup win. What a terrible run. Back seven. Brandon Bond and Lawrence okay. two. Advantage. Back against high school, that's a knock on. New Zealand have got an extra man here, nothing extra can do. Dropped by Vito. Another knockoff. Offside. Referee's given a penalty. Here, New Zealand will get another chance. Most okay. of the players in the world are kidding themselves. Or can't kid themselves. But they won't be. Because. Captain! It's a grounded count. Stuart Lancaster knows this is just right at the start of the journey. He's been emphasizing that all the time, even in the face of defeat.
said before this game, England have showed oodles of character this autumn, but they've lacked class. Today, when the opportunities came, they found them. And by doing that, England delivered a performance that took them out of the top tier of Six Nations, second division rugby, into the area where the oxygen is thin, where you have to perform against the best. They didn't quite have enough to beat Australia and South Africa, as unlucky as they may have been against the box. But today, England found one of the great performances in the last 15 years, one of the great performances in the professional era here at Twickenham from an England side.